This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is Huawei's highest end phone yet. This is the Mate 10 Pro. There's already been a Mate 10. We didn't see much of that in the United States, but well, outside of the United States, particularly in Asia and in Europe, you did, and apparently you liked it. It sold pretty well. So the 10 Pro, what's so pro about it? It's really not so much that much more pro. It's just different. It's doing that trendy thing, the 18 by 9 widescreen tall aspect ratio display with almost no bezels. The result of that, though, is the fingerprint scanner has to get moved to the back side. Oh well, at least it's centered and not in a weird place. Hello, Samsung Galaxy Note phone and all that sort of thing. It's a big phone, six inch display, again, sort of like the Note 8. Uh, there's a several other changes and we'll decide whether it's more or less pro or not. One thing to mention, there's no US pricing yet. It's around the equivalent of $920. So this is a pretty pricey piece. And there's a very strong rumor, and Huawei, I talked to them, and they certainly didn't want to deny it, that this is all be coming to AT&T in early 2018. I think that's likely. So right now, we're just looking at this as an unlocked GSM phone. We're gonna look at it now. So undeniably, this is a nice looking phone. You've got an OLED display here at six inches. Now the resolution isn't super duper high on this actually, which is surprising. It is full HD, but taller in this direction. So it's 2160 by 1080, which is the same resolution display we saw on the more affordable OnePlus 5T that I recently reviewed. It's lower than the Samsung Gal Galaxy Note 8 resolution, but at 402 PPI, I mean, that's still very high pixel density. It's not like you're gonna look at that and say, oh my goodness, what jeggies. Obviously you get the no bezel design, which means the fingerprint scanner has been moved to the rear in a fairly sensible place, but this is a tall phone every bit as tall as the Galaxy Note 8, so it's quite a long reach there. Now, I have really long fingers and pretty large hands for a woman, so it's not a problem for me. The look is kind of nice. I love this band they did in the glass here. And by the way, it's supposed to be Gorilla Glass 5 front and back, and then hardened to seven by 700 degrees of heating or something like that. It's still glass. You're still going to want a case. Uh, but one nice thing about it, Huawei always gives you a clear case in the box, kind of a frosted clear case, a little TPU thing. It's better than nothing. I've been using it. It keeps the fingerprints off because, boy, does it show fingerprints. There's three colors available. There is a, a gray, titanium gray, they call it, midnight black, and the mocha brown, which is the most interesting color, certainly, among them. It's a pretty nice looking phone. Metal frame over here. It's all high quality stuff. Up top, we have something that you just don't see on phones anymore, and that's an IR blaster if you want to use it to control your AV home theater gear. There is no headphone jack on this. This is the USB-C port for charging here and data transfer. Uh, because they went with IP67 water resistance, something the regular Mate 10 didn't have, they said it was too hard to waterproof the headphone jack. Considering the fact that Sony and Samsung have been doing that for a while now, I don't know. That seems a little bit lame to me. So we got a bottom firing speaker here, and it's technically stereo because it also uses the earpiece as the secondary speaker, which of course means it sounds a little better than the average phone with a mono speaker. Despite the glass back, there is no wireless charging. I asked Huawei about that, and they said because it has a 4,000 milliamp battery and wireless charging is not the fastest thing as it is, they thought that it would just seem too slow. So that's their reason for not doing it. Got Leica branded cameras is always on the rear, and they do a great job with cameras. I really do enjoy their higher end phone, their mate cameras. And so you've got dual, you've got the 20 megapixel monochrome sensor here, it takes sweet black and white, and you've got a 12 megapixel main RGB or color camera, both with f1.6 lenses. There's OIS for the main lens on this, not for the secondary monochrome one. It's totally awesome sauce as ships with Android 8 Oreo out of the box. Yes, manufacturers are still letting loose phones sometimes that are running 7.0 Nugget. Uh, you get EMUI, which is their Emotion UI, also set to version number 8. And I've never been really been a fan of it, but at least they have settings now where you can have an app drawer instead of doing it the kind of Chinese phone way where, you know, the, all the apps get thrown on the home screen to the side. And the, the notifications have been... Uh, less manhandled, let's put it that way. you got all your usual quick controls right here. You have NFC, the usual dual band Wi-Fi, aptX Audio, Bluetooth 4.2 on board, and if you want to get to all settings, it's looking a lot more like, shall we say, normal stock Android. And for me, that that's actually a good thing. I don't like heavy overlays. Happily, their, their software does not impede performance in any way. 
This is running on Huawei's own Kirin CPU, the 970. That's their fastest to date, and it really holds up against the Snapdragon 835 for CPU scores and benchmarks. Graphics is a little bit behind with an integrated Mali GPU, but not terribly. It really is a pretty fast phone. It's available with 4 gigs of RAM or 6 gigs of RAM, depends on, well, your region, I believe, and the options that they're going to offer there, and either 64 or 128 gigs of storage. There's no micro SD card slot here, unfortunately. Either a single or a dual nano SIM carrier, that's all that you get here. It is pretty darn fast. It feels fluid in everyday operations. Again, like I said, their, their software in interface with its unusual touches here and there really hasn't um, impacted performance at all. So fast, yes it is. This is an OLED display here, and it's a good-looking one, and the viewing angles are pretty good. It doesn't really lose much as you go side to side or back and forth or up and down. It's actually doing better than the Pixel XL in that respect. You've got color temperature settings here, so you can set it to how you like. The default setting is a little on the cool side, which it seems like a lot of people actually do like. And you've got a couple of different color saturation modes. So you've got vivid over here, and you've got normal. Normal is actually a bit more accurate. I personally prefer that without that extra cool look going on there. In any case, supports HDR10. You have very high contrast ratio here. It's a, it's a nice enough looking display, even if it's not the highest resolution display on the market. In terms of data speeds, this has an LTE CAT18 modem. For those of you who follow those things, that's a very fast modem, potentially 1.2 gigahertz speed. So uh, Snapdragon 835 is up to CAT 16. So they wanted to do a little, one little better there. If you do get the dual SIM model, they both support 4G LTE. Sometimes that isn't the case with some phones, so that's important to know. Lots of LTE bands are available, and I suggest you go to their website to check for your particular country's bands are offered. Again, this is GSM only, not CDMA, so no Sprint, no Verizon on this one. Also, for an interesting little parlor trick, it can connect to a projector via cable, like a USB-C to HDMI, so you don't actually need a dock if you want to excite people with presentations on a projector. As ever, their, their Leica branded Mate cameras are really good. This is right up there holding its own neck against something like, say, the, the Samsung Galaxy Note 8 and the Pixel 2 XL, which you might consider to be blasphemy, but really it is that good. The user interface is, well, a little bit busy here, but there are explanations for what most of these things are. Wide aperture mode, if you want a little more background blur look. Portrait mode, wide aperture, you get the idea here. Standard, vivid, color smoothing, all sorts of stuff. And if you swipe this way, you can choose from these various modes. So if you want to do monochrome, just tap right there. Panorama, HDR, and so forth. And if we swipe this direction you have all your regular settings. So this can shoot up to 4K resolution for video, which is what we have it set to. It does have optical image stabilization for the main camera, however if you're shooting at 4K resolution it will not use it. So you got to shoot at lower resolutions. It is useful for low light photos at night. And if you want to go to pro mode you just swipe up like that and check it out. You can change your ISO, your EV, your shutter speed even, which is something you don't always see on a camera phone. I can tell you that the, the photos that this takes are lovely, and you can see some examples on screen, particularly that monochrome camera is just really very impressive, and a lot of those are low light shots. Those indoor shots are all low light, and there's really very little noise there, and a lot of detail, and a very natural look by camera phone standards. So 4,000 milliamp battery, that is phenomenally high capacity battery there, and indeed it has quite good battery life. The display resolution is not pushing any limits for insanity in terms of, well, number of pixels you're pushing there. The Kirin 970 is obviously a fairly power efficient CPU, so I really couldn't find a way to kill this in a day. I mean, if I was out there playing Pokemon Go with the GPS active for hours, I guess I could, but with normal use, streaming videos, sending emails, browsing the web, all that normal stuff that we do with our phones, social networking, it just really goes for about a day and a half on a charge. Sweet. So that's the Huawei Mate 10 Pro. I mean, it certainly is a very nice phone, but that's a lot of money. It's hard to say what it will be priced like if and when it does come to AT&T, but even overseas European prices, Australian pricing, Australian pricing is not so bad. European pricing is a little on the high side. I, it's hard to say how well it's going to do. I'm sure in Asia it's going to sell real well in their home territory, probably decently in Europe as well. But it's up against strong competition. This price range, though, you're talking about the Samsung Galaxy Note 8, other high-end phones. For people who are actually considering an iPhone, there's even like the iPhone 10.
not that much more expensive than this. It's a, it's a nice step forward for them into the high-end market, though, something that we haven't seen in the United States before, where they typically sell their more affordable on or line of phones. So it's promising, and it's not exactly more pro than the regular Mate 10, but if you like that tall, kind of widescreen aspect ratio display and that trendy no bezel look, then it just might float your boat. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.